Hello, this is Ubri from Smallfish, and these are 5 sandbox tips you didn't know about Editor Edition. First off, for tip number 1, we have nullable properties. You can turn any value type property into a nullable type by appending a question mark. This is going to be reflected in the inspector with a checkbox appearing to the left of the property. When the text is grayed, then that means the value is null. You can enable it by clicking the checkbox or setting it through code. This is useful for variables that don't always need to be used. For example, instead of a boolean to enable the ability to sprint and a float to define the sprint speed, you can tidy up and just use a nullable sprint speed property. If it's null, then you disable the ability to sprint. Now, for tip number 2, there's the require component attribute. Using the require component attribute on a component property indicates that this component needs to exist. If the component doesn't exist, it gets automatically created as soon as possible. This is useful for creating helper components or anything that doesn't really need to get modified in the editor. Here's a few examples. A prop that requires a rigid body component, an NPC that requires the citizen animation helper component, or a player that requires the inventory component. Tip number 3. Always override toString. In any class or struct, you are going to want to override the toString method. Doing so will let you customize the name that gets displayed when referencing them in the inspector. This makes it much more readable when you have lists, making it easier to differentiate them as well. And yes, it also displays like that in the console and is clickable as well. While on the topic of structs, here's tip number 4, the key property attribute. Are you sick of pressing a button to open the struct editor every time you want to edit your struct? By using the key property attribute instead of the property attribute, you'll be able to edit your variables in the inspector itself. Don't worry though, the editor is still there on the side. Make sure not to overuse it though, because it gets crowded fast. You can even use it with delegate types like actions, so that they show up on the main tab of the component instead of being bounced up with all of the other default ones in the actions tab, but you'll have to combine both the key property and property attribute for this one to work. For our last tip, tip number 5, we have the button attribute. You can add the button attribute to any method in your component. Doing so will add a button in the inspector, which when pressed is going to run the method. In this example we're running the action defined above. You can see that it also runs in the editor as well. This is useful for debugging purposes. For example, a kill button on an NPC, the break button on the prop component, or a respawn button on the player. That's all the tips for now. If you'd like more videos like these, there's a lot left to cover. Could even be model doc tips or sandbox in general. Let us know in the comments. As a bonus tip, if you need any help with your project, you can join the Smallfish Discord in the description and ask for help in the help channel. Thanks for watching!